business. That being said, what if instead of launching a bunch of different ads every week, we launched one new dynamic creative test against a batch of winning ads in a CBO where Facebook determined where to spend the money. Now, the biggest pushback I get on this is, well, not every ad gets a chance to spend and I don't know if that ad was any good. Yes, you do. Did it get spent? No, it's not good enough. And the pushback I get on this is, well, when as soon as I put it in ABO, it gets a lot of spend and the results are good. Great, at like 5% of the budget. Is it actually spending half of the money you spent today? in that separate place? The answer to that is no. So the idea of trying to test it in isolation and then scale your account means all you need is a bunch of little tests in isolation. The more tests you run, the more they're going to cannibalize each other. So the less successful they're going to be and the less insight you have on how any one of those ads actually impacts your omni-channel marketing. So you don't know if that ad is actually any good or if it's just something that your Facebook cost cap is running to try to take as much credit for the email and search team as possible. That's not good either, is it? So if instead we built out a really simple system with one dynamic creative where we let Facebook spend the money on the combination of the ad that best fit the end user experience? And then we said, hey, does this actually earn spend? And if the answer is no, well then the ad's not good enough. And if the answer is yes, and that ad starts to get a bunch of spend and your results get better, hey look, your winning test is already scaling right away. And fun fact, because you're using dynamic creative, the vast majority of your budget is going to the winning ad. Remember when you were running all that ABO with a bunch of different ads or running for a week where you were playing the lottery to try to get rich? The vast majority of your money was being spent on losers. Now, the vast majority of your money is being spent on winners or it's not getting spent at all. This is the promise of what cost caps are supposed to do ABO, but instead we're just letting Facebook say, what do your users want to see? And if it gets more spend, do my business results get better? Well, now we know if this creative test gets more budget, and our business results improve at the same time. Oh, look at that. This ad not only is winning on Facebook, but is also helping our business. Or more importantly, maybe it's a loser on Facebook, but our search volume dramatically went up and our organic direct volume dramatically went up. And really what we found is something that's amplifying our business model, even though our first party, third party, whatever platform for attribution you wanna to try to rely on today to get lucky says otherwise. Now you can understand how that test impacts your entire omni-channel marketing because you don't have a hundred different salespeople all knocking on the same doors competing with each other and knifing each other in the street to see who gets credit for a sale. And fun fact, the thing that earns spend is also generally what Facebook wants to show its end users. So your CPMs are gonna get lower and your ad account is gonna be more stable. And those ads, especially if you run them at broad, aren't gonna fatigue. Now the fun thing here is because we're not launching new creative tests every single week, we're not creating a situation that manufactures ad fatigue. Our ads are gonna last for a lot longer. In fact, they don't ever have to fatigue ever again because you're not launching new things to compete with the old ones and the old ones are already winning. You don't actually have to launch a new test. And if it's winning, then what? One of the most common mistakes that I've seen people make is, well, this ad's a winner. I'm gonna put it into my scaling campaign. I'm gonna spend it to the moon, which is highly disruptive. So now we're sitting in a situation where that ad is already in a CBO in the only campaign that we're having because we have our like one campaign because we're leveraging this scientific method and machine learning and we've decided that the idea of playing the lottery to try to get rich isn't really a good business practice and the things that other people have told us that aren't working for us and aren't working for them either are things we don't want to do anymore. What do we do when the ad's winning? Well, let me ask you this. If it's winning, what does that really mean? So in my world, the ad is winning because ultimately it's earning more spend. And as a result, our blended CPA is coming down, which means we have a larger margin on every transaction that occurs in the business in an omni-channel fashion. Our PSM gets better. Maybe it goes from a 1.1 to 1.4 or a 2.1 to a 3, whatever that number happens to be. Well, now what? Do we move the ad? Do we take what's working and stop it? No, just, just increase the budget. If you know that you can afford to spend more money to acquire each transaction, why not just spend more money? That creative test can actually run for weeks or months. And once you reach the point where, look, I can't spend any more money. I've maxed out my ability to scale my efficiency. What happens if you start to take a look at search and increase the budget there? Cause you just created a lot more volume of opportunity. Well, when you do that, your blended CP is going to come back down and oh, I guess that means we can raise our Facebook ad budget again. You can do this over and over for weeks or months and have that creative test 
not actually ever end and you don't need to launch a new one. Matter of fact, you don't ever need to launch a creative test until you've maximized your ability at scaling efficiency and volume in an omni-channel fashion. And at that point, when that actually does happen, just take the winning post ID out of that DCT, move into your control environment, the winner's ad set in that campaign, and just launch another one. Maybe you wanna launch two creative tests at the same time. We just have to understand that we're trying specifically to improve upon one of the ads in our control environment. Even at broad, some of those ads are prospecting, some are mid funnel, some are bottom. Which ones do we actually need to do better with? Let's just do a test to try to do better at those. Now we can be incredibly strategic with our creative testing, and if we're right, all we need to do is crank up the budget a little bit. You can even automate that so that you don't have to crank up the budget. Now your whole job is every couple of weeks, maybe you launch one more creative test because you've reached the limit of your ability to scale the efficiency. And as a result, you need to introduce a new test to try to improve on the assets that Facebook can leverage to improve your marketing efficiencies in an omni-channel fashion. That takes a fraction of the work and gets you much better results. What if I told you the way to scale your campaign is to stop competing against yourself where you spend the vast majority of your money in testing on losers and declare winners because something got lucky on far too small of a spend to actually declare any statistical significance. And instead, you focus on scaling your efficiency. So the only thing you really had to worry about, your number one problem was you weren't spending enough. What if you focused on the biggest problems? problems instead of busy